10 Things You Didn't Know About Britain's Prehistoric Flooded Past, based on the post-glacial flooding hypothesis, by Robert John Langdon. Introduction. The Britain you know is a fake. We look at our hills, rivers and coasts and think they've always been there. Stable, permanent, but that picture is a lie. Now, at the end of the last ice age, Britain was a land in chaos. Seas surged 60 metres higher. Rivers swelled beyond imagination. Entire countries disappeared beneath the waves. Archaeology often ignores this truth. Too many theories are drawn on a modern map, a map our ancestors would barely recognise. After two decades of field work and over 260 research blogs, I can tell you, to understand prehistoric Britain, you must read Droid. Here are 10 things you probably didn't know about the drowned, shifting, waterlogged world our ancestors truly lived in. One, the Britain you know is only 8,000 years old. When the Holocene began, Britain wasn't an island. A land bridge linked us to Europe until rising seas finally severed it around 6000 BCE. The change wasn't gentle. Melt water pulses sent the tide racing inland, flooding valleys in years, not centuries. Sea levels rose faster than our worst climate forecasts for 2100. Every coastline shifted. The mouth of the Thames moved inland. Estuaries formed where farmland now lies. Your hometown could have been seabed. If you stood there then, your well, mental map of Britain would be unrecognisable. And, uh, the island nation idea, a very recent reality for most of prehistory. Britain was part of a wider European landscape. Two, Stonehenge's blue stones couldn't have rolled here. The romantic image is familiar. Teams of men with ropes and ox carts dragging stones 200 kilometres from Preseli to Salisbury Plain. But around 8000 BCE, 90% of that route was deep wildwood. Valleys in between bog-soaked mires. Wheels would have sunk without a trace. The real transport network wasn't overland. It was water, seasonal floods, frost-hardened winter ground, and above all, rivers. LIDAR mapping shows prehistoric waterways were the true highway. This single fact changes the Stonehenge story entirely. It wasn't a land-locked hall of brute force. It was a calculated, water-based operation using the landscape to its advantage. 3. Britain once had a country twice the size of Wales and lost it overnight. Doggerland was no myth. It was a vast lowland stretching from East Anglia to the Netherlands. Its marshes, rivers and lakes supported thousands of people. For centuries, it was a bridge between Britain and Europe. Then it drowned. Whether through steady sea rise, sudden flooding or both, the result was the same. Communities found themselves separated by water where there had once been solid ground. That shock forced a new reality. Boats were no longer optional. They were survival. In my maritime diffusion model, this moment explains why megalithic architecture suddenly spread so quickly along Atlantic coasts. The sea became the new road. 4. Raised beaches, or the fingerprints of a flooded Britain. On Britain's south coast, geologists point to raised beaches, sand and gravel layers perched far above today's tideline. The standard explanation is a mix of ancient shorelines and the isostatic rebound. But the data doesn't match the story. My research shows these aren't fossil beaches at all. They're concave river-shaped deposits. They sit under layers of unstructured chalk. Exactly what you'd expect if catastrophic meltwater floods carved paleo channels down to the sea. British geological survey maps confirm the pattern. Huge branching flows, not static coastlines. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. These are not tranquil remnants of a higher tide. They are scars of a country in flood. 
and they tell a far more dynamic, violent story than the textbooks admit. Five, the Thames was once seven kilometres wide. Beneath London, boreholes reveal up to 10 metres of early Holocene silt. This was not the neat channelled Thames we know, it was a vast braided tidal delta up to seven kilometres across. Such a river wasn't just wider. It was a different creature entirely. Settlements clung to their high ground like islands. Boats connected them. Trade and travel followed water channels, not overland tracks. This wasn't an obstacle, it was a super highway. And here's the myth buster. London's lack of prehistoric sites isn't due to modern building wiping them out. LIDAR shows that much of the Thames Valley floor was too wide and flood prone to build on. Only a few habitable high points existed, the places we now call the home counties. Six, the Isle of Wight was cut off by a flooded river valley. The silence started as a river, then around 7,500 years ago, rising seas burst through the valley, flooding it completely. A short walk became an open water crossing and a life on both sides changed overnight. Suddenly, trade required boats. Communities reorganised. Control of crossing points likely meant influence and power. Archaeology along the submerged Solent shows drowned forests, hearths and even work timbers frozen in place beneath the waves. Most extraordinary of all is Boldner Cliff. Here, 11 metres underwater, lies the world's first known boat building site, a 6th millennium BCE harbour that imported einkorn wheat from mainland Europe. This was no primitive backwater, it was a maritime hub, centuries ahead of its time. 7. Somerset's levels were a salt water swamp. Between 5,600 and 4,450 BCE, the Somerset levels were not the patchwork of fields we know today. They were all Dakar woodland, slowly drowning under advancing salt marsh. Peat cores show the shift layer by layer, from fresh water to brackish tidal intrusion. To prehistoric people, this meant constant adaptation, moving camps, changing food sources, finding safe ground. Centuries later, societies would turn this swamp into a managed landscape of canals and raised trackways. But in its early days, it was a shifting, dangerous maze of water, a place that could swallow your settlement in a season. Eight Stonehenge stood on a peninsula fed by a healing spring. Stonehenge didn't stand beside a ceremonial pool or a ritual lagoon. It was built on a peninsula jutting into the River Avon, fed by a natural spring at Stonehenge Bottom. This fresh flowing water made the site an ideal meeting place and a reliable refuge. The blue stones, brought from Preseli, were more than decorative. They contained minerals with natural antibacterial properties. In a world where sepsis from a cut could be fatal, those stones were medicine. Water from the spring flowing past them created a setting believed to aid recovery from infections and wounds. Forget the stargazing theories, Stonehenge was a healing centre built with purpose and grounded in survival. Nine are Iron Age, hill forts may be older and wetter than we think. From the air, hill forts look like defensive enclosures. But LIDAR tells a different story. Many sit in wet, low-lying areas with evidence of ditches that once held water. These weren't forts braced for battle. They were moated settlements designed for trade and control of water routes. In a wetter prehistoric Britain, that was often more important than any war. Re-examining these sites with the hydrology in mind reveals a network of connected hubs, places where goods, people and ideas moved not along ridge tops, but through waterways. It's a complete rethink of forts as we know them. 10. The map in your head 
is a mirage. When we think of Britain, we picture a static shape, familiar coastlines, steady rivers. But in prehistory, those lines were always on the move. Rivers cut new paths, valleys flooded, islands appeared and vanished. The Britain of 12,000 years ago was nothing like the Britain of 8,000 years ago. And both were strangers to the Britain we know now. The post-glacial flooding hypothesis forces us to redraw that mental map. Once you do, everything changes. From how Stonehenge was built, to why Doggerland mattered, to the true nature of Hillforts. It's not just a new map, it's a new past. Conclusions. Redraw the map. Rethink the past. Prehistoric Britain was not a gentle green land. It was a place of rapid change, flooded valleys and disappearing coasts. Ignore that. And you get bad archaeology. Factor it in uh, and new explanations open up for the monuments, settlements and journeys of our ancestors. The evidence is there. The map is wrong. It's time to set it right. Thank <laughs> you.